Hey folks, this is Jason Lewis, the producer of the From the Shadows podcast. I just want to remind you about our website, fromtheshadowspodcast.com. We have a Facebook page. We would appreciate it if you like and follow. Also, join our discussion group on Facebook called After the Shadows. We have a Twitter feed. Please follow us on Twitter. It can be found at podcast underscore from. Follow us on Instagram at From the Shadows Podcast. We have a YouTube channel. Go to the search bar of YouTube and put From the Shadows Podcast and please subscribe to that channel. We are also on the Odyssey Radio Network and we can be found there at odyssey1.com. We are still on the traditional podcatchers that everybody loves to listen to us on. We get a lot of feedback, so please rate the podcast and communicate with uh, whether you're on Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, Apple Podcasts, Podbean, or Google Podcasts. We're there, and we appreciate it when you leave comments for us. We also have a Patreon page. It can be found at www patreon.com forward slash from the shadows you can receive books stickers coffee mugs and special content just for our patreon subscribers check it out for yourself and see what packages that we have to offer well that's all i have for you right now folks and thanks for being a part of the from the shadows podcast family so with that being said let's get this episode started so how are we um we have a very very special episode um that we're going to we're going to record tonight for our uh, loyal listeners of the howler we are joined by a super fan and a superstar one mr uh tim loveless tim welcome to the uh welcome to the midweek howl with me and the howler you can't you can't imagine how excited i am to be on here right <laughs> you're right we I, can't, we can't. <laughs> so, so seriously yeah i i am a super fan of the howler i mean shane obviously i know you from uh working on the movie and then you told me you're gonna do the podcast so i thought i'll give it a listen i'm interested in the paranormal i've had experiences myself and i listened to it and i thought well what's this what's this ozark howler and uh and i started listening and i think i've listened to all of them but uh yeah. <laughs> well, a super, a super, a super fan should listen to. And and as a side, as a side note, okay. So I I keep I keep a, a like a lookout on all of our you know social media platforms and where people listen to us for comments. You know, so if somebody gives us a good comment, I can respond to them and thank them. And um, a lot of people don't. They, they really love the paranormal part of the podcast it's but they don't really get the ozark howler part of the podcast okay you know like some people just want to hear about bigfoot and ghosts and ufos or whatever so this this young lady was on our our, our youtube uh youtube page last week and she had somehow got introduced to the podcast but the first episode she was going to listen to was a midweek howl okay and her comment is, is, oh, my gosh, I'm new to this podcast. I can't wait to listen to this episode and get my cryptid fix. And I'm like, oh, my God, why is she listening? Well, here, Jason, the super producer, uh, labeled the episode Run In with the Game Warden. So, she, so it was the episode we did with the Game Warden that I'm sure she is reading it like, oh, my God, Bigfoot had a run in with the Game Warden. Or dog man had her and and I tried to get on her and apologize into her to her in advance, but I did not get in time. She gave us a thumbs down. So um, thankfully, um, the people that give us a chance and listen to this to this part understand that it's it's not very paranormal. It's not very normal, but it's not. But it's definitely not paranormal. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> but, but 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 why we were having Tim on is. Is Tim is a guest on a couple in a couple weeks on our Halloween special, and Howler, I he you know you guys have a 
law, both of you have a law enforcement background. Okay. I mean, you have a storied law enforcement, you know, national security background. Tim has a law enforcement. And he told me and Jason a story off the air that I thought only could be shared on an episode of the Ozark Howler. And, and so I, you know, I've been pumping this up and, and Tim, you know, go ahead, share, share it with us. Tell, give us a little background. Well, and share. I, uh, all right. I, and, he, and here's the thing. I don't, don't expect me to be near as entertaining as the Howler. If I could tell him the story and have him tell it, it it'd be a hundred percent better, but I, I'll tell you what. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, I worked as a, I worked as a boat cop. And I did that job for seven years. And, uh, you know, being a boat cop, you pretty much handle everything on boats. So after a couple of years, they had enough confidence in me to allow me to train the new guy. And we got this new guy and uh, we met up that morning and it was his very first day on the job. And I said, uh, I said, what do you want to do today? He goes, I want to arrest somebody. (laughs) I said, I said, well, we're boat cops, man. <laughs> it's not something we <laughs> typically do. <laughs> I mean, we, we write tickets for not having a life jacket, you know, or, you know, we just, you know, ride around and wave a lot of the time, you know. But uh, I said, but I will tell you this. I said, uh, there is there's a lake in this county that for whatever reason, whenever I go there, there's somebody with a warrant. I said, every, it seems like every time I show up, I think it's a lake that they like to hide in. You know, they think that, hey, it never gets checked. It's, it's got a real small launch area. It's kind of hard to launch there. It's got a real small parking area, and the whole thing's surrounded by big, tall cattails. And you can't see the lake from the boat launch. I mean, you literally have to go out a, a channel of cattails to get out into the lake, you know. So, But you can usually drive by and tell if there's anybody on the lake. There's only a handful of houses on it. And, uh, and the fishing act- is actually pretty good on it, but it just doesn't get a lot of play. I said, so I'll tell you what, I said, we, we got the freelance patrol today, which means we're going to pull a boat and we're going to go spot, spot check some lakes. So we go out there and there's, there's one boat trailer sitting there in the, in the parking lot. And I go, well, it looks like, you know, we got a customer. I said, I'll tell you what, we're going to go out, we'll do, you know, give them a safety inspection, kind of walk you through it and, and see how it goes. So we get out there on the lake and uh, it's not a real big lake, but it kind of winds around and then it goes from like 60 foot deep or 80 foot deep. I can't remember. I know it's a super deep lake for as small as it is, but it goes up to about a foot and a half and it does it instantaneously. Like it's an old gravel pit, like it's a ledge. And I said, <clears throat> when you come out here, you gotta be careful. Cause if you're cruising across this lake and you, and you hit that shelf, you're going to, you're going to die. So I want to show you, you know, how to recognize the change in the water color and all that. So we're motoring around and I see, I see all, all the way back in this shallow area back there's a pontoon boat. And I said, uh, so, well, that's our guy, you know. I said, I think it is. Anyway, we'll go back there and check him out. So we cruise up to the edge, the shelf, and, you know, I slow the boat way down. I trim the motor way up, and we're going to have to just kind of slow chug it out to this guy. And I threw the binoculars up on him, and he's got the fishing rod out. I said, okay, he's, out, he's sitting there by himself. It's only one guy he's fishing. And we motor up to him. And it took us a good, I don't know, a couple of minutes to get across because we're going so slow. And as as we start to approach, I see him stand up real slow. And he walks over to the edge and he's staring at us. And all of a sudden, he just puts his hands on his face like Macaulay Culkin. And he's just standing there with his mouth <laughs> open with his hands on his face. <laughs> so I said, I said, well, he, uh, this guy didn't expect to see us today, so I don't know what's going on, you know. <clears throat> so uh, so we motor over there, and uh, as we get up close enough to it, I see he's got, he's got a bunch of weed on the boat. He's got a bunch of these little, you know, pill containers and stuff out there, and he's separating the buds and putting them in the pill containers, you know. And so I, I guess he was selling them that way, but he was uh, definitely dividing it up for distribution purposes, you know. And the whole time he's still standing there, frozen like Macaulay Culkin. And I said, "Hey, how's it going today?" And the guy goes, "Oh man." And I go, "What?" He goes, oh, "You're not gonna believe it, man." And I go, "What?" And he goes, "I forgot my fishing license." <laughs> <laughs> I said, "I said, yeah." I said, "That ain't the only thing you forgot." <laughs> I said, "You forgot to hide your weed." That's <laughs> like. 
Oh man. So, so anyway, he, uh, we pull up alongside the boat. My partner bails out of the boat. I mean, he's already got the guy just about handcuffed. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I said, hold on a second here. So, uh, we had to, uh, we had to process the guy. The guy was excited. My, my brand new partner was excited. And, uh, he was excited for his big, big drug bus, but, uh, the guy was so high. He was under the truth serum. He couldn't tell a lie. I said, I said, well, uh, I, is, you know, go ahead. No, go ahead. I want to hear. I, maybe he just forgot, you know, maybe I don't, I, you know, I, I, yeah. I mean, I, I don't want to say I've been there because, uh, but I've seen some people do some stupid stuff when, when they, when they, uh, they're freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he was freaked out. I, I was more freaked out on my partner bailed out of the boat, like Hawaii five Oh, like he was taking down a big, you know, <laughs> drug cartel or something. <laughs> well, I, that's just the common, you know, I call it American. I mean, I don't want to say bad, bad mouth American law enforcement, but, because I don't think I, I would like to think that I wasn't quite there at one time, but I've seen some act awful crazy. I mean, they really. I had an old lieutenant of mine. I always blamed it on the, the movies, right? Because he had started in the '70s, where the movies you'd watched in the '50s and the '60s, you had one particular kind of cop, right? When you watched a movie, cop movie, and you know, in the '50s, it was Dragnet, just the fe- just the facts or whatever. And by the time he was training me in the 90s it was it was a whole different you know what i mean we had uh, you know dirty essentially <laughs> you dirt well i would get yeah, dirty hair but i was thinking more along the lines of of and right in the middle of it was when you know miami vice hill street oh, blues it when because we were a generation that, i don't want to say we because i didn't pull my gun out a whole lot like some people i worked with but of a generation of pulling your gun out all the time because we, and they blamed it. These old times blamed it because on TV we had grown up watching cops or we had grown up watching TV where all the cops pulled their guns. So we just assume that's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, oh. Yeah. Blaming the, that's your training video. <laughs> well, it's, just, it's what you think. And, and, and it, it, and it goes into what people think, right? Cause people really think cop, being a cop is, is just absolute craziness all the time. And it's not. It's craziness in a bad way. It's hey, dude, you know, it's the fifth of the month and your mileage report's not in. It's you know, <laughs> you got. I mean, I think I've told the story on the podcast before. I I vividly remember my sergeant telling me and I, you know, uh, hey, dude, you wrote. Uh, we had monthly tickets. We had yearly tickets. We had what's called care counting period, which was holiday per- period. You know, from like the Wednesday before Thanksgiving to the Sunday after Thanksgiving. And, and you, 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 they tattled, t- tabulated your tickets and, you know, and it would, they, they would say the Missouri wrote a thousand tickets this weekend, you know, on, on new year's day or new year's Eve or whatever, or they arrested, you know, 150 people statewide or whatever. So they would watch that. But at the end of the year, my sergeant, I remember he said, Hey man, you, you give 400 tickets and you give like 1,800 warnings. What's the deal with that? It should be maybe the other way around or maybe 50-50, you know, but you got, you know, and he's he's comparing me to other people, you know, that I worked with. And I said, well, you know, I led the zone. That's what we call the zone. I led the zone of DWI arrests and felony arrests and, and stolen vehicle recoveries. And um, like real stuff. Like real stuff, yeah, because if all you're doing is speeding to work whatever you know, you know what i mean god bless you slow down right right now what he thought it was this is what he blamed on we were in a rural area in northwest missouri northeast missouri known for uh uh big deer and a lot of a lot of waterfowl and he always blamed it on me trying to find places to hunt oh, you know like i'd pull a farmer over instead of giving him a ticket i'd ask him how many acres they had stuff nah. like that that's what he always blamed it on <laughs> it, because because you... that never happened, right? Right. <laughs> and and and, and um, anyway, I and I remember said, "Hey, if you don't like writing tickets, maybe you need to find a different line of work." Which I did. That's when I went into, I, you know, I ultimately ended up at the feds and the national security, and and uh, they didn't care if I did anything as long as I made <laughs> did some paperwork that looked like we did. It was 
I mean, it, 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 you know, yeah. Hey, listen, don't, don't talk about working for the federal government as being easy because then people are going to think that my job's easy. So let's not, let's not lump us all in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, I don't know. Uh, and I think I've told the story before. I mean, I've told the story about, I did a search warrant and I'm going to shorten this. Um, I was attached to a, a, a drug unit and they were going to do a search warrant. They did a search warrant on a, on a guy's house and he immediately got evicted from that house and for dealing drugs, uh, cocaine. And he, his girlfriend rented an apartment or rented a duplex across town, you know, within two or three days. He was, he was a, he come from a fine upstanding family, but just he strayed from the path of righteousness and, and, and in a town where everybody knew who he was, if that makes sense. So no sooner than he got kicked out of one house, he was getting his keys delivered at the new house and the drug unit was already on him. Does that make sense? So, yeah. <laughs> and the sheriff, uh, that was a good friend of mine and a guy who, who I worked for back in the nineties, he was, uh, he was on the, uh, this drug unit was a multi jurisdictional one and had a board of directors. He was the head of the board of directors, this thing. And I was in there one day and he said, Hey, they're wanting to do a, uh, we got a problem. We're wanting to do a search warrant here and within an hour or so. It's a cul-de-sac. They're building these brand new duplexes. There's really no nowhere to hide from the new from the old street down this new street because they built the the ones in the cul-de-sac first, right? This guy's in the cul-de-sac. How are these guys going to get all the way down to the end of the cul-de-sac before these guys can start flushing this dope or or what have you? And I said I can do it. They said, huh? I said, you got the search warrant? Yeah, we got the search warrant. I said, where, where are we meeting at? You know, I, I can do it. Give me 15, 20 minutes, I can do it. And my brother is a, uh, uh, works in labor's hall. I mean, he's a union laborer, but specifically he works at uh, the power generation uh, company there where I'm from. And so I run my, I said, dude, I need a hard hat, huh? I said, I need a hard hat. What do you need a hard hat for? I said, don't ask a bunch of questions, dude. I just need a hard hat and a car hard jacket. And I had a pair of Carhartt bibs anyway. So I, I put this pair of Carhartt bibs on. I got a Carhartt jacket. And I got my, my brother's old hard hat. Hey, it's got a number three Dale Earnhardt right, right in the top. Right in the front. <laughs> and it's, it's just stickered. Standard issue. Isn't that standard deep undercover. It looks standard. like the real deal. I mean, it looks like the real deal, right? And, <laughs> and I, we go to this meeting. Give me a copy of the, 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 the warrant. I got a copy of the warrant. I put it on my clipboard. I put my Motorola cop radio right in the front of my bibs. I put my Glock 2240 caliber duty weapon just in, just in the pocket, right in the front pocket. And I walk down this street, right? Looking around, looking around. And I get down to this brand new duplex and I can see the dude, one of the dudes, I don't know how many's in there. I could see him opening, looking through the blinds at me when I'm walking up up to it. You know what I mean? I could see him. And I'm looking at my clipboard, and I knock on the door, and they say, "Who is it?" And I said, "Amron." Who? Amron? Who? And Amron is union. It used to be Union Electric. And I just changed Amron. They're the utility. And finally, I said, "The the effing power company." We don't cuss <laughs> on, the, the, on the on the Grover's podcast. So, dude opens the dude opens well, the I door. Don't. Well, I don't. I mean, <laughs> dude opens the door about four inches and says, "Who are you?" And I said, "We're the utilities. We got a natural gas leak." And the guy behind him in the room says, "Who is?" And he goes, "It's the power company." He says, "There's a natural gas leak." He goes, "Well, shit, you better let him in." And <laughs> they open this door, and there's three of them sitting in there, and they've got one of them on one of them green Coleman. You know those little Coleman bottles that go on your Coleman camp stove when you can turn it propane. They got mm -hmm. one of them with a with a like a grazing torch on it. It's sitting on the counter blowing full blast. I mean, as hard as it can blow. And they got two or three keys of coke on the table like nobody's business. And now I've got this search warrant on the thing. And I said, who's the property owner? And I forgot what this guy kid's name was, Doug or Dale or something like that. And he goes, yeah, I'm Doug. And I said, hey, look at this. And when he said, yeah, it, it, I'm Doug, I picked up that Motorola mic, and I said, yeah, this is the right house. And I just put it right back in my thing, and I, I handed him the whole clipboard, and he starts reading that search warrant. 
And he looks at me and goes, where in the fuck did you find this? <laughs> and I said, huh? And he goes, where did you find this? And I said, right out here. And he says, where? And he opened the door all the way. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm inside. He reopens that door, and when he reopens that door, that first cop is standing there with shot. I mean, they're coming there. First one's got a shotgun. You know, that's back before they had uh, ARs and all that shit they got nowadays. Back in them days, you, you you rolled in with shotguns and put them all down. You know what I mean? All these, this whole line of cops come rolling in there. Boom, 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 boom. And he's still sitting there trying to figure out where I got. It. Where'd you get this? Still thinking you're working for the electric. Company. Yeah, he thinks I'm still the electric company. I found it out. The he's got a Dale Earnhardt sticker on his helmet. I mean, go. <laughs> Where'd you find this? <laughs> That's great. I mean, I, hey, look, I I've told you I've told you before. My buddy that works at the sheriff's department, he he he'll sometimes call me up and say, "Hey, where you at? You got your jet? You got your rain jacket with you?" And he'll snag my. He'll come and get my rain jacket, and uh, I don't ask any questions. And he'll come back afterwards, and he'll find me. So here you go. And I'm like, did it work? Yep, it worked. Because mm-hmm. so, everybody answers the door for the electric company and the mailman, right? <laughs> right. Well, you know what I felt bad for? I told the guy down at the jail later, and he says, I still don't understand how you – because he, he saw me at the jail with this whole utility outfit on still, right? He's still the <laughs> And he said, I just don't a understand. Gas he, jail. You know, he's gas trying to process it. I just don't understand. <laughs> and I said, you know what I couldn't understand? He goes, what? And I said, you're opening the door for a natural gas leak, and the whole street's all electric. There's no gas down there at all. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even, you know, the proper retort would have been, we don't have any gas. We're all electric. <laughs> uh, well, but, I guess you don't. I guess you don't get yourself in that position with being being that smart on your feet. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's right. Oh, thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of the From the Shadows podcast. Until next time, never shy away from the darkness or what may be lurking in the shadows. We are out. <laughs>